Welcome to a Kuva guide for all your ribbon rerolling addiction needs. Today we're going to be learning how to properly farm Kuva and seeing which method is the best for farming and which one you should be doing. The reason I really want to test all these methods is because of the new Kuva disruption. I want to see how fast it is compared to all of the other methods. Now, also before we begin, I do want to say that everyone is going to have a different method that they enjoy when it comes to farming because, well, it's farming. It's never really going to be constantly fun. It's more, you want to do the method that you enjoy the most, but always remember, don't burn yourself out, don't force yourself to play just to re-roll one riven, just take a break when you need. So let's start out simple with Kuva Siphon missions. There are two different types of these, there's the basic Kuva Siphon and then there's the Kuva Flood. The Kuva Siphon is very easy at levels 25 to 35, while the Kuva Floods are a lot harder having enemies at levels 80 to 100. There's only able to be one Kuva Flood at a time, and there are only able to be five Kuva Siphons at a time. And you want to find these by looking for where the Kuva Fortress is on the map, and the places with these missions will be the two closest planets to them. So say it's between, I don't know, Earth and Mars, then the Kuva missions will be on Earth and Mars. It's very simple. Whenever you're doing one of these missions, it will be the normal mission type that it is on that node, and you'll just run around doing the mission like normal until you see a marker indicating where the siphon is. Once you find it, you just defend it and wait until you see a red swarm of Kuva flying towards it. Once you see this, quickly dash into it as your operator or shoot it with your operator weapon. After doing this four times, you'll have successfully completed the siphon and can finish the mission like normal. With the Flood, it's the exact same thing, just harder enemies and you get more Kuva as a reward. For the normal siphons, on average you get from 600 to 800 Kuva, while the Flood will get you double that. You can also double this with resource boosters, making you earn around 14 per run in normal siphons and almost 3000 in Floods, and you can once again increase it with the Smita Kavat buff, but of course, and that's complete luck. But say you're trying to force the buff out, what you want to do is wait until you're on your last swarm of Kuva to destroy when it comes to the siphon, and then you're just going to want to wait around until you either get the buff or you don't because sometimes they can you know you can get it immediately or it can take like five minutes to get it once but if you run out of time you're just going to have to take the normal reward whenever you farm kuva this way it's always going to be best to run the quickest mission type so that means capture rescue spy if you're quick with it exterminate just try and avoid any of the endless modes because once you complete them you don't get to go back and do another siphon now, whenever you're farming these, most people will probably end up averaging around 5 minutes. You can be quicker, you can be slower, but let's just give it a fair estimate and say you're doing 12 an hour. That would result in around 8,400 Kuva. Of course, this can vary vastly if you're getting the lowest amount of Kuva, or you could be getting much more and get the highest amount of Kuva every time. It's RNG. It can totally suck sometimes. But also, of course, whenever you're doing these, you want to try and knock out the flood mission every time that comes up. While doing this, that will also net you an extra 1,400 Kuva, so if you have a resource booster, you could be getting upwards of 15 to 17,000 Kuva per hour. That's a lot of Kuva. Now let's check out Kuva Survival. This is one of the known great methods for farming Kuva. This one's simple. You run the Kuva Survival mission on the Kuva for actually complete this. You don't get the usual 30% oxygen, you only get 10%, so sometimes you may have to actually either run a frame that kills insanely quickly, run someone like Necros or Hydroid that can increase drops for oxygen, or what you'll have to do is you'll have to actually end up skipping every few rounds to not do an air supply as Kuva. You'll just have to use a normal air supply so that you can stay alive. Once you finish your catalyst defense, it will net you 200 Kuva, which can also be doubled from resource boosters, allowing for 400 per catalyst. And then, of course, Smita would increase that up to 800. So on average, whenever I'm doing these missions, and of course they can be completely different for everyone, I do around two or three every five minutes because sometimes the air supply doesn't spawn quick enough to constantly do in every minute. And after that, I was earning around six to 8,000 Kuva per hour, which isn't bad, especially considering you don't have to worry about any load times once you're in. But of course, if you want to avoid super high level enemies to stay more casual, I would just say around the 30 minute mark or maybe even the 20, just leave and then come back, especially if you're solo. But of course, with that resource booster here with your reward, you would be earning upwards of 16,000 Kuva per hour. So, I mean, that's an insane amount of Kuva. That's incredible. And honestly, this is really fun. This mission is fun, especially if you're solo, because you're constantly running around defending different objectives. You have to constantly keep track of your air supply. So there's never anything boring going on. Next up, let's quickly get bounties out of the way. Kuva can be earned from the bounties in the plains or in Fortuna. Neither of these are reliable methods and you can't guarantee you'll get the Kuva. And the most you can even get from one bounty is 500 in the Fortuna bounty. 
And this isn't a really good method at all of farming. You should only be doing this if you're just focusing on doing bounties, because the Koopa doesn't even get doubled from resource boosters. Along with this, I will also quickly mention that doing the sorties, you do have a 12% chance to earn 6,000 Kuva. But even though this is a good amount of Kuva, it is a low chance of getting. But if you're doing the sortie, go ahead and try and get this because it's always nice since sorties don't usually take that long. I also want to quickly mention that when it does come to the bounties, you can actually get more than one Kuva reward per bounty. It's just that it's a low chance, so it doesn't really make sense to try and farm it this way because, you know, RNG is lame. Next up, let's talk about Nightwave. Nightwave levels can earn you around 20,000 Kuva, usually having two different levels that episode. Now, I know right now with the Emissary, there was only one, but that's because of something else I'll talk about. And this is just amazing. You get this just for playing the game, and you can also earn even more by saving up your credits from the episode and waiting for the 10k Kuva bundle to be sold in the store. As of right now, it's only been available with the current Infested episode, but I, I believe it'll come back in the future. This is just a great way to get Kuva, but it is hard to map out how much you would get per hour, since you'd have to see how fast you complete each mission, and then divide the Kuva by that. And it's just complicated. This is more like, it's there if you're playing the game, and it's a great option because, well, you get Kuva just for playing. That's incredible. When leveling, again, I also recommend that if you don't want to force yourself to play the game certain ways because some challenges can be very annoying, just wait for the weekly rotation and challenges so that there's different ones to do because there are so many that will be completed by you just playing the game, and then there's some where it's like a 30-minute Kuva survival. You don't have to force yourself to play that. Just wait until you want to play it. But hey, that is, that's even more Kuva if you want to farm. We're finally here. Let's talk about the new method for Kuva farming. Kuva Disruption. I have been running this a lot, seeing how much you can get, and the only thing I can really say right now is that it's pretty nice. So you get 100 for the A tier reward, 200 for tier B, and 350 for tier C. You can completely avoid the little 100 Kuva by completing all four towers in the first rotation, immediately getting you up to the 200, and on your third round you can actually get the 350 if you complete all four. In the fourth round and up you always get the 350 for completing at least two of the four rotations. And that's great. You also get 50 Kuva every time you kill the Demolist that comes to destroy the towers, meaning with all of the towers being defended too, on your fourth round after killing all the Demolists, you get 550 Kuva per round. For me, solo, it takes around 2 or 3 minutes per round depending on if I can find the key carriers quickly. So after about an hour of farming, I was earning around 8k Kuva per hour. In the clip, you're seeing I actually earned 5,000 from 25 minutes. So that would have been around 12,000 Kuva in that hour, which is almost on par with Kuva survival. It's just a little lower, which is great, because it gives you a new endless mission type to play. And if done correctly, you can do this a lot quicker, because once you learn the spawns for each tower where the Demolist can spawn, all you have to do is drop the key in, run there, kill it, and you're done. And of course, this is also solo. If you're playing with other people, you can have individual people all do a tower, allowing you to complete it even faster. So that just leaves us with wrapping everything up. Kuva Floods and Siphons are definitely the best for farming Kuva, especially when the missions are right, while the Night Wave is the best if you're just playing the game and you want a lot of Kuva. Survival and Disruption are great if you want to grind out some Kuva efficiently, and if you've got a booster, it's an even better source of Kuva. But if you don't want to run for 30 to 60 minute missions every time, you can of course just always stick with the Siphons since you can just go through, finish it, and leave. And of course, just ignore the bounties for Kuva farming unless you happen to be doing something in the Plains of Eidolon. I'm just gonna say completely ignore it. And then of course, there's always your sorties. Make sure you're doing those every day. You can get amazing rewards. You could even get that legendary core that if you don't want to use it yourself, you can always sell for 300 plat. But hey, even if you do end up getting the Anasa sculpture, at least that's a free 15 to 20 plat. Or if you want the endo, you can get the endo from it. That's going to be it for the video today. If you guys learned anything new about Kuva farming, be sure to drop a like and a comment for which method is your favorite for grinding. And if I got something wrong, please comment that. I don't farm Kuva that often, but of course if I mix anything up or I mess something up, be sure to comment to fix it. And if you do want to help anyone maximize farming, just leave your tips down below. And if you want to join the graduated parliament, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below. I'll give you a little top hat and a diploma in watching my videos. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day and keep on farming that Kuva. Also, if you made it to the end of the video, be sure to comment I'm an owl now and I'll heart that comment.